Hello friends, this video is on femoral nerve. It is an important nerve of lower limb. You may get a short note on this nerve in your exams or a structured question like describe femoral nerve under the following headings, origin and its root value, course, branches and distribution and applied aspects. You may be asked to enumerate the muscles supplied by the femoral nerve. Your answer should always begin with introduction. Femoral nerve, it is the main nerve of the anterior compartment of thigh, which is also known as extensor compartment of the thigh because it contains a muscle known as quadriceps femoris, which is responsible for extension at the knee. It is the largest branch of lumbar plexus. So here you can see uh, the lumbar plexus and lumbar plexus is formed by ventral rami of L1, L2, L3, L4. All plexuses in our body, whether it is cervical, brachial, lumbar or lumbosacral, they are all formed by ventral rami of the spinal nerves. Now let us look at the root and the origin of the femoral nerve. So femoral nerve, it arises from the dorsal divisions of ventral rami of spinal nerve. It is clear because it is taking origin from lumbar plexus. So obviously it will be formed from the ventral rami of spinal nerves. Which spinal nerves? L2, L3 and L4. So that's why the root value is L2, L3 and L4. Now here if we look at the lumbar plexus, if this is the, these are the ventral rami. So ventral ramus of L2, L3 and L4. It is dividing into ventral division and dorsal division. So you can see the ventral division of L2, L3 and L4, they are forming a nerve and this nerve is the obturator nerve. Whereas the dorsal division of L2, L3 and L4, they form the femoral nerve. So you can see here, this is the femoral nerve. Let us consider the course of femoral nerve. We will divide the course into two parts, abdominal course and the course in the thigh that is in the femoral triangle. So let us begin with the abdominal course. So here we can see in this picture, this muscle is psoas major muscle. This is iliacus muscle. And here we have quadratus lumborum muscle and transversus abdominis muscle. So this is the posterior abdominal wall and this is the iliac fossa. That is what you can see. Now here you can see this femoral nerve, but you cannot uh, see the femoral nerve here from its origin till it reaches the iliac fossa because it is covered by psoas major muscle. So after it is uh, formed from the lumbar plexus, this is going to run on the posterior abdominal wall deep to which muscle? Deep to the psoas major muscle. So it runs on posterior abdominal wall deep to psoas major and then emerges along the lateral border of psoas major. That's what you can see. Here it is emerging along the lateral border of psoas major muscle. So now it has descended down here into the iliac fossa. So this is the iliac fossa you can see and it is located between these two muscles that is psoas major muscle medially and the iliacus muscle laterally. After this, it is going to pass deep to the inguinal ligament here and reach the thigh and which part of the thigh? The femoral triangle of the thigh. So now let us look at the course in the femoral triangle. Here you can see the boundaries of the femoral triangle. Inguinal ligament can be seen. This is sartorius and this is adductor longus muscle. Here you can see the femoral vessels enclosed in femoral sheath. So this is femoral vein and this is femoral artery and this is our femoral nerve. So it enters the femoral triangle. You can see by passing deep to which ligament? Inguinal ligament. And it lies lateral to the femoral artery, but outside the femoral sheath. So femoral sheath has got three compartments. The medial one is known as the femoral canal. Then intermediate has got femoral vein and the lateral most has got femoral artery. So femoral nerve, you have to remember, is outside the femoral sheath and lateral to femoral artery. So here also it is located between uh, the two muscles. There is a groove and in between these two muscles, you can see the iliacus and more medial to that, there will be psoas major muscle. 
So let us see now after this what happens. In the thigh, in the femoral triangle, after a brief course of about 2 cm or an inch, you can say, this is going to divide into two divisions, anterior division, which can be seen here, and you can see here, this will be the posterior division, right? And this uh, short course, which it runs in the femoral triangle, its upper part, this is the trunk of femoral nerve. So after it passes inguinal ligament, only for about 2 cm, right, it, uh, the trunk of the femoral nerve is present and then it divides into anterior division and posterior division which will give further branches. So now we will look at the branches and the distribution. So here we can see this is the femoral nerve in this diagram. Let us look at the branches now. So first we will consider muscular branches. So we will see it will give a branch in the abdominal region that is in the iliac fossa, right? So this branch is to which muscle? That is to iliacus. And after that, it after it crosses the inguinal ligament, it will give its branch to pectineus. That will be branch direct from the trunk. Sometimes it may arise just above the inguinal ligament also. So the only branch from the trunk uh, of this in the femoral triangle will be pectineus. So now we have seen two branches. One is in the iliac fossa to iliacus and second is to pectineus that is from its trunk here. And from the anterior division, again it gives a branch to one muscle, that is sartorius muscle. And from the posterior division also, it gives branch to one muscle only. That muscle is quadriceps femoris, but it has got four heads. So now we can see there are four branches, one in iliac fossa, one just below the inguinal ligament from the trunk, one from anterior division, and actually there are many branches from the posterior division but only one muscle is supplied that is quadriceps femoris so what are the four heads of quadriceps femoris rectus femoris vastus lateralis vastus intermedius and vastus medialis so three vasti and one rectus femoris that is what you can see here this is a branch to rectus femoris then to vastus lateralis vastus intermedius and a branch to vastus medialis Let us look at now the cutaneous branches. So we will first see cutaneous branches, then articular branches and then vascular branches. So begin with cutaneous branches from the anterior division. This is the anterior division. You can see a branch given to the sartorius and there are two cutaneous branches to the skin of the front of the thigh and medial side of the thigh. These are intermediate cutaneous nerve of thigh and medial cutaneous nerve of thigh. So anterior division will give one muscular branch and two cutaneous branches. So you can see here intermediate cutaneous nerve of thigh and medial cutaneous nerve of thigh. And then from the posterior division, it gives uh, the longest cutaneous nerve of the body, that is the saphenous branch, which you can see, uh, which is not only going to uh, run through the thigh, but it is actually going to supply the skin here over the medial aspect of the leg and the medial aspect of the foot also, dorsum of the foot also. So this is the saphenous branch from posterior division. Then articular branches, okay, so before I tell you about articular branches, let us see here the cutaneous innervation. You can see in the thigh, the anterior and the medial aspect of the thigh that will be supplied by these two branches from the anterior division of femoral nerve. Here the lateral aspect is by lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh, which is a direct branch from the lumbar plexus. Here is ilioinguinal nerve, again a branch from the lumbar plexus, then genide, uh, femoral branch of genitofemoral nerve and the obturator nerve. So these are the nerves which are going to supply the skin of the thigh. Now coming to the leg, you can see on the medial aspect of the leg, this uh, the skin is supplied by saphenous nerve. It will also supply the skin along the medial aspect of the dorsum of the foot till the base of the big toe so medial side of the big toe and the skin over the big toe that will not be supplied by saphenous nerve that will be supplied by superficial peroneal nerve so this you have to remember so it will be only till the base of the big toe that will be supplied 
let us look at the articular branches so there are two articular branches so here we have one to the hip joint and another to the knee joint right and because it supplies both these joints that's why sometimes what happens if there is any disease uh, in the hip joint then the referred pain is also felt at the knee because the same nerve is supplying both the joints and vice versa is true if there is any disease process in the knee joint the patient may feel referred pain in the hip joint why because both the joints are supplied by branches of uh, femoral nerve now let us see which muscular branch will give a branch to hip joint it is a branch to rectus femoris this muscle rectus femoris here so a branch to rectus femoris that will supply the hip joint and branches to vasti the three vasti they will supply the knee joint vascular branches the artery which is present here that is femoral artery so femoral nerve will also give the vascular supply to the femoral artery let us consider the course of saphenous nerve this is the longest cutaneous nerve in the body and we have already seen this is a branch of posterior division of femoral nerve so saphenous nerve as we can see here it arises from the posterior division of femoral nerve in the femoral triangle and will leave the femoral triangle at its apex along with another nerve you can see here this is the nerve to vastus medialis plus the femoral vessels will be also passing and it enters into this canal that is adductor canal which is also known as subsartorial canal because this is present just deep to the sartorius muscle so this canal is present here on the medial side of the thigh in the middle one third of the thigh after passing through the adductor canal then it is going to pierce its roof at its lower end so it will pierce its uh, roof at its lower end that is of the adductor canal and then it is going to descend along the medial side or medial aspect of the knee after this it is going to pierce the deep fascia here so here it is going to become superficial that means it will lie in the superficial fascia and will descend along the medial aspect of the leg then passes in front of the medial malleolus and reaches the dorsum of the foot and will run till the base of the big toe so this is the course of saphenous nerve coming to applied aspect femoral nerve also may get injured due to uh, gunshot injury or stab injuries anywhere along its course but usually the femoral nerve may get injured uh, here due to hip bone fracture or pelvic fracture or can be compressed in the groove between iliacus muscle and psoas muscle due to psoas abscess so we can see here the formation of the psoas abscess the pus gets collected and it will also pass along here along the psoas major muscle into the femoral triangle also now what will happen because of the injury to the femoral nerve the motor loss there will be poor flexion of the hip joint due to paralysis or of the muscles that will be affected will be sartorius and pectineus but uh, iliacus and psoas major muscle uh, they can uh, help in flexion of the uh, hip joint then there will be inability to extend the knee because the only muscle which is responsible for extension of the knee is the quadriceps femoris and that is supplied by femoral nerve so that will be affected so inability to extend the knee poor flexion of the hip that you should remember then sensory loss it will be the loss over the skin which is supplied by branches of uh, femoral nerve cutaneous branches of femoral nerve so over anterior and medial aspect of thigh because this area of the skin is supplied by intermediate and medial cutaneous nerves of thigh which are branches of femoral nerve then on the medial side of leg and the foot up to the ball of the great toe that is till the first metatarsophalangeal joint right and this is supplied by the saphenous branch of the femoral nerve there will be also loss of knee jerk reflex now it has been observed that in diseases of hip joint the pain is referred to knee joint and vice versa so why this happens because the joints both these joints are supplied by branches of the same nerves that is femoral as well as obturator nerve so therefore pain from one joint is referred to another joint in case of disease process which involves one of the joints 
then saphenous nerve this is the nerve of choice for nerve grafting we have seen it is quite superficial here in the leg and it is long also but care has to be taken because it is accompanied by great saphenous vein in the leg they are in quite close approximation and especially at this point where they cross each other so that care must be taken that's all so that's all for this video thanks for watching and if you have not subscribed please subscribe my channel so that i can put more such videos and if you want uh, the questions and answers in anatomy all types of that then visit the website that is anatomyqa.com thanks once again